Hello everyone and welcome to Virtual Discovery Day. My name is Mike Allen. I'm director of the University of Florida's Nature Coast Biological Station in Cedar Key and a professor in fisheries aquatic sciences. Um, today I'm going to talk about a study that we have ongoing with the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission to look at an expanding snook population in the northern Gulf of Mexico. Caleb Pertabaugh is the leader of this study. C Caleb is, works with the FWC uh, lab and is director of the lab in Cedar Key. Charlie Martin is also an estuarine ecologist with our group at UF and his team is also working with us on this project. <clears throat> we see evidence of a warming climate throughout Florida. These are some air temperature data from the Cedar Key NOAA gauge and at the top graph you can see the average annual minimum temperature and that has increased through time over the past 20 years on average. Some years are warmer, some years are colder, but on average, it's not getting as cold as it used to get, um, even over the past 20 years. The bottom graph is the number of days of the year where the air temperature is greater than 25 degrees C. And you can see that those are actually also increasing over the past 20 years, um, where we have more warm days. So these two graphs indicate less cold days and more warm days uh, through time. Common snook are a pochandrous hermaphrodite. They switch from male to female, um, and they're known as a sub subtropical fish. They live basically historically in the southern half of the peninsula of Florida. In the Gulf, that means from about Tarpon Springs further south. Um, they are intolerant of cold water temperatures below about degrees C, which is about 50 degrees Fahrenheit, and temperatures below that can cause a loss of equilibrium and mortality. And cold kill events are not uncommon in Florida uh, for snook populations. These are very popular sport fish. Um, the anglers come to Florida to pursue these um, regularly. Um, they're caught on a wide range of artificial and live baits. Excellent table fare, but also a very prized game fish and well managed in the state overall. Our study leader here, Caleb Pertobaugh, this is, uh, he's on the right hand side here with the FWC group putting some acoustic transmitters in fish and these are part of our ongoing studies with snook is to follow their movements, but that'll be a, a talk of a future time. The Fisheries Independent Monitoring Program from the FWRI um, is an ex excellent uh, fish monitoring program that includes estuaries around the state. In the Cedar Key area, we're lucky to have one of these labs here, and they actually have been sampling fish using a stratified random design over the past 20 to 25 years. So we have a lot of historical data on the fish population in this area, and those data are very consistently collected the same year after year. When we look at the snook catches for Cedar Key, we see an exponential increase with really no snook caught before about 2005. A few caught in between 2005 and 2010, and then since about 2012, 2013, we've seen an exponential increase in the number of snook in this area. Snook are really common now in the Cedar Key area from this sampling program and also just from anecdotal evidence from anglers and, and social media showing catches of snook. They're very common in the region at this point. This map shows the Suwannee River estuary and it has four panels. Each one is for a different time block and the upper left panel is from 97 to 2006 and you can see just a single black dot around the Cedar Key area of a single snook collection in that time. As we go across you see more and more black dots and by 2016 to 2018 in the lower right hand corner we see uh, black dots throughout the Cedar Key area and the size of those dots is indicated of the number of snook captured. We also see occurrence of snook all the way up past the Suwannee River and into the river itself. Um, so a full uh, spatial establishment of snook in the region over the last few years. One of the most interesting parts of this data set is really the, the size distribution. And these graphs show the percent of fish that are caught in each size group, which size group is on the x-axis in millimeters. And the point of this graph is that when snook first really started showing up in the Cedar Key, Lower Suwannee area, it was mainly just large individuals. If you look at the top two panels here, mostly large fish that are over 20 inches, um, adults are the first ones that showed up. 
But through time, what we've seen is that the size distribution is really filled out to where now we have a lot of young fish. We hear evidence of juvenile snook reproduction, like the picture with those in the hand um, show, is that we, we have small snook occurring in the estuary, which is very evident of local reproduction in this area. And now we have snook of all sizes in the area. And we believe this, this is good evidence that the snook are fully established and that they're completing their life cycle in the Cedar Key area. Based on these analysis, what we found is, is that uh, we believe there's an expansion of the Snook Range from Tarpon Springs up past the Suwannee River. And we have a journal article summarizing this work that's uh, accepted for publication in Plus One uh, Journal that postulates this expansion of the Snook Range to exceed the, the northern range of the Suwannee River. Um, so this is a, a new evidence of an expanding uh, snook population. I mentioned acoustic telemetry. We've been doing the uh, work tracking snook with acoustic transmitters. What we found so far is that the snook really used the Suwannee River itself during the winter, most likely as a thermal refuge. Um, and that brings up some interesting policy scenarios because thermal refuge habitat during winter may relate to the groundwater flow. So if the spring, spring, springs flow at a high rate, you would pre presume to have more uh, warm water and thermal refuge habitat for snook to be able to withstand the particular cold winter that we know is gonna come eventually. Um, so snook may actually serve as an indicator for minimum flows and levels of how reduced flows could reduce thermal refuge and reduce their habitat at this norm northern extent of their range. We're working on expanding this work with the Suwannee River Water Management District, specifically to look at how snook, snook populations could inform minimum flow and level regulations. And that work is upcoming. So thank you for uh, your attention today. And if you have questions about snook populations in our area, feel free to join us at the Nature Coast Biological Station for questions.